It's a very common requirement to add delays to your assembly code and in this video I'm going to show you how we can use an online tool to generate that code automatically. So if you want to add time delays into your assembly code, this is the video to watch. Okay, looking at my code that I've written so far and I'm using MPLAB X IDE, it's very simple. The main part of the uh, program code is just going to set a bit high and then to clear that bit and then to repeat it. Okay, so it's very simple. Now I want to delay there and there. And uh, so how do I do that? Well, if you look in the video description, I'm going to paste uh, this uh, link here, Golovchenko. And it's a really easy to use code generator. You type in the delay here. I'm going to use half a second. And these, these were already populated by default, so it's going to use these temporary register names. And you need, you do need to check that the clock frequency is correct. Now, this is correct for me. I'm using a PIC 16F88. I'm using the internal oscillator and I'm configuring it to be four megahertz. Uh, in other words, the instruction frequency is one megahertz because remember clock divided by four is the instruction frequency so that's all correct so do make sure that's correct um, tick that if you want a delay routine and i do and then you can give the delay routine a name so i'm going to call that well that actually uh, that just popped up because that was a delay routine i've used before and typed in that field um, but give it a, a useful name um, select pick and then I'm going to click generate code. Now, remember, if you had some other delay, like one second or whatever it is, you can type that in there, no problem. So click generate code. And so this is all the code that we need. Now, uh, if you're one of my students, select the whole lot, or in fact, not just if you're one of my students, select the whole lot. I like to have this in because then it tells you uh, when you put this in your code, uh, where it came from. And so let's go to MPLAB X. Now, where do we need that pasted? Well, uh, you need it under this code block, the main program code block. Well, that's the best place, I think. So then the linker can just paste this in program memory. So let's just uh, paste that in. And OK, so that is the label starting off the subroutine. And then that's the return of the subroutine. And this C block, this is the thing, those temporary registers. Now I like to format it back a bit, so I'm going to press uh, Shift Tab. And then I like these indented, so I'm going to tab those in. Now, the thing that you need to understand, if you're not already familiar about the C block, and I think I've posted a video about C block, is it's a directive that um, allows you to pretty much replace the oldest fashion style of using equates. So, you know, previously you might have said, D1 equates to a particular number, D2 equates to a particular number. Well, this speeds things up. Um, let's just go back and have a look at the data sheet. Now, my general purpose registers are in the address range in bank zero between 20 and 7F. And as I'm not using any other general purpose registers in my program code, I'm going to start at 20. So 0x hexadecimal 20. So D1 will be 2,0, D2 will be 2,1, D3 will be 2,2. Two. It's much nicer doing that rather than saying D1 equates to hexadecimal 2,0, D2 equates to hexadecimal 2,1. But, you know, if you want to use equates, you can. OK, let's just save that. Let's um, see if that compiles, assembles, I suppose, without errors. OK, good. So that worked. And um, so that's the definition of the subroutine, but of course we haven't actually called it yet. So now all we have to do is just do call. And what do we call it? Again, we called it um, delay 500 ms milliseconds. So where are we? There we go. So we're going to call that and then we call it again. So remember, or bear in mind, that's one instruction cycle, and then that's going to be 500,000 instruction cycles, uh, or half a second. Um, so one instruction cycle, half a second, but then to go to, don't forget, that actually does take two instruction cycles. So the on-off time is not going to be 
exactly balanced here, but it's going to be as good as. If you needed something um, exactly balanced, then you'd have a slightly different lead time to, uh, delay uh, on, on for this uh, low here. Okay, now let's uh, test this out. So I'm going to add a breakpoint here and I'll run the debugger. And uh, let's just uh, collapse that down. And so you can see that we're about to execute this instruction. And so far we have used 17 instruction cycles, which because we've got one instruction cycle, one microsecond means 17 microseconds. Let's just clear that. So we're now reset. And if I press F7, which uh, steps into the current line, which is bit set file, so F7, that took one instruction cycle, as you would guess. Now, if I did an F7 again, a step into, it would actually step into this delay routine. I really don't want to step into it because it, it would, it's going to loop many, many times. So what I'm going to do is F8, which will be step over. So it will actually execute this, this whole line called delay 500 ms. But I don't have the, the uh, pain of actually going through every single uh, instruction in it. So I'm just going to do an F8. And so now you see we've got um, 500,000 and one instruction cycles. Remember, that was one instruction cycle. This this was one instruction cycle. So that's 500,000 500, instruction cycles. So we're now at this point. Let's just uh, reset. And F7, you see, so one more instruction cycle. Let's just reset again. And we just prove now that this, uh, which we've just run the same as before, that's going to take us exactly 500. So let's just start 500,000. So let's just do an F8. And sure enough, 500,000 instruction cycles taking 500 milliseconds. In other words, half a second. Uh, let's just uh, reset. And then do a, uh, an F7. And of course, that took two more instruction cycles. So uh, it just goes to show how easy it is really to create a time delay of exactly 500 uh, milliseconds or half a second. But just be aware that you may, well, you will have other delays in your code that are unavoidable by executing, say, setting a bit or clearing a bit, something like that. OK, so um, just to recap, uh, this, this uh, URL I'm going to put in the video description. So go to this, type your delay, choose seconds. You can accept the defaults here. Make sure you've got the right clock frequency. Give it an appropriate name for the subroutine. Picks what I want and click generate. And then uh, when you get your code in, you're going to have a C block and you need to specify an address. And to specify an address suitable for your microcontroller, you need to look up the data sheet for your microcontroller and choose an appropriate address, starting address for your general purpose registers. Don't forget that if you're already using some other general purpose registers, you might not be able to use hexadecimal address 20. OK, hopefully uh, that's uh, useful. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, just post a comment. Or if you're one of my students, you can just ask me the question in the lesson.